My guests today are Nick Rowan, the Cloud Director for Public Sector at Aptio, and Megan Sakura, a Customer Success Advisor also at Aptio. Nick, Megan, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Let me set just a little bit of context for our discussion. Agencies have been on this journey to put more applications and workloads in the cloud for more than a decade now. As you all probably remember, it started with Cloud First. We, we evolved to Cloud Smart. And now the next phase of this journey is really understanding the true cost of those cloud services. Agencies must decide based on data and metrics which applications make the most sense to move to a cloud provider, as well as whether to modernize it or just start them over. FEMA, just as one example, is using a cloud broker approach for many of its enterprise services. The agency believes it can save up to 30 to 40% of what it's spending now on similar services by moving those applications to the cloud. Other agencies also recognize the benefits of cloud services around scale, flexibility, and of course we have to mention security. There's a lot of factors to consider as agencies move further down this journey into the cloud. And that's where our guests come in to help us understand some of those considerations and why those discussions about moving more applications and workloads into the cloud need to be include more than just agency chief information officers. So once again, I'm joined by Nick Rowan, the cloud director for public sector at Aptio and Megan Sakura, a customer success advisor also at Aptio. Megan, I'm gonna start with you on, on this question because I think it's important to understand the, the idea of managing the workloads in the cloud, you're moving more, agencies are moving more in there. What are some of those considerations? What are you starting to see about how they're able to, to, to get the most out of that management of workloads in the cloud? Sure, absolutely. So there are many challenges that are unique to the federal sector that differ from the private sector. Uh, one of the things that we see when people are managing workloads to the cloud that they come to us and ask us about is really focusing on colors of money. We always hear that term, essentially the different fiscal years, different appropriations. It really produces a challenge for utilizing cloud. Now with Vitara, we've really seen a push towards working capital funds. And um, this really helps us with like the sharing of reserved instances to achieve economies of scale, for instance, or savings plans they're able to do a show back charge back. However, if you have different appropriations that you're using for something very specific, CIOs really tend to wor worry about the Anti-Deficiency Act violations. We also see some challenges in managing the workload when it comes to federal procurement. Cloud technology and terminology doesn't really tie cleanly back to legacy procurement processes. So it's really been a paradigm shift for the CIO shop working with the procurement shop. And the whole idea of this pay as you go, this variable cloud instance is really different for a contracting officer. Back in my time in the federal agencies, I definitely worked with a lot of contracting officers focusing on firm fixed price, and that doesn't necessarily work in the cloud. So, so we see a lot of education happening with procurement, but we have a lot of initiatives like you had mentioned earlier, Cloud Smart is making a lot of these practices easier. We're also seeing places like GSA who are working to help in the aid of buying cloud with their new creation of the Ascend BPA, which covers a multitude of cloud services. But I actually wanted to hand it over to Nick for the next part to really talk about how public sector is really managing those workloads. Yeah, thanks, Megan. And you know, one of the key things that's really important here when we talk about you know the uh, interaction between DevSecOps and finance is fitting within the existing financial kind of processes and, and, and kind of the difference between traditional IT financial processes and uh, cloud financial management processes is, is more of a time scale. So if you think about the typical fiscal activities, it's a monthly exercise to kind of tie out. It's a quarterly exercise to do any sort of um, true ups and it's a yearly budgeting cycle uh, so far as three to five years on the federal government. Cloud costs themselves are incurred hourly daily, weekly. <laughs> so one of the key things is shifting those existing processes to help support getting the information to the DevSecOps teams and the application owners that are managing these workloads today and helping provide that transparent picture back to the executive leaders um, on, a, on a month end financial process so that folks really understand where costs are being incurred or if there's any course correction that needs to be taken to support the footprint that you have today. A couple of things I want to go to back to some of that Megan said, Megan, I, th I think the part of color of money is a really important piece that uh, like just to hammer home a little bit. I agencies, the struggle comes when agencies have one year money that expires and cloud is not a one year thing. You don't just go to the cloud and in that one year and then you hope for the best. 
how are they balancing out that that color of money challenge? Is, is, is working capital funds, is, as you mentioned, is one way. Are you starting to see other approaches to to trying to find that right balance? So we are seeing a lot of agencies move towards a working capital fund as the main strategy to trying to overcome some of these problems. But for folks who are still using particular appropriations because they can't move out of that, it might be that it's a new initiative. Um, and it has a very specific mandate associated with it. What we see is they start employing various different FinOps and TBM practices in order to help maintain and show back to the agency what they are actually spending on that particular product or software. So employing these practices has been essential in achieving a good chargeback without having to go over cost for a lot of these cloud implementations. That challenge of not going over costs, I know I hear a lot of that from CIOs is that they have some sort of meter where they get an alert if they're getting close to costs because of the Anti-Deficiency Act, as you mentioned, that they're very afraid of, of, of violating that. Is that something where uh, something like TBM or FinOps can kind of help them understand what their cost is on a more regular basis? Even, you know, okay, if we scale, if we have a surge, if we have an emergency, it, it will give us that kind of insights in terms of what it may look like or what we can afford? Absolutely. So automating the process and utilizing a tool such as Aptio really helps with these challenges. You know, when I worked in the federal government, the biggest view that a CIO or a, an ACIO had was once my money's obligated, it's gone. And I don't want to go over it. But that really creates a disconnect between the expenditures. And if we start ignoring what our cloud costs are, as Nick has mentioned, they are they could change hourly. We could see spikes happen without knowing they're occurring until the following month. And by then it's too late. We're already over budget. We have to recoup those costs. So by having a really good FinOps practice in place and being able to monitor this stuff on an hourly basis and having alerts that could set up if we see unknown spikes or anomalies in the detection of our cloud, it really helps agencies to be able to pay for cloud and not have to struggle to pay with it or have to do unnecessary trade-offs, which honestly creates mistrust with the business unit. I always say that the biggest strength of any one person is also their biggest weakness. It's the same thing with cloud. The variability of the cost of cloud is its biggest strength and why people really like using it. But if you don't have good oversight, it's also its biggest weakness, and it leads to a lack of transparency. So the business units really can't make any difference to the cloud if they don't know what levers they can pull because they don't have any insight into that spend. Nick, come back into the conversation for a minute because I also sure. want to go back over something you said, which is that budget cycle, that challenge of the planning and understanding that this has got to be a you know, monthly, quarterly exercise that, uh, up to the, to the CXO community, whether it's the CFO or mission owners, but maybe the CIO's office or the mission owner's office has got to understand what's happening more often, you know, whether it's the folks in the DevSecOps or whomever. How does that work? And, and, and you know, is, is monthly, quarterly exercise even enough? Do they have to know more often, mm -hmm. you know, weekly basis or daily basis? Yeah, yeah. And that's actually one of the, so I, I came over to um, the public sector business after we acquired Quadability and helped onboard the Quadability customers, which is cloud financial management, which is the, you know, where FinOps really came from. Um, the key really is on building a program that supports, you know, a shared services model. So you've got a safe and secure spot to land for all those common elements that you're managing today. And if you have your cloud center of excellence that's managing that footprint and the majority of those kind of contracts that you have with your cloud service providers and other vendors, you're basically taking over a lot of the um, things that everyone's using that have a little bit more of a, a um, uh, linear cost basis associated to them. When we move out to the application portfolio owners or the BUs, I think I've heard a couple of sessions uh, here also speaking to this, is how to hold them accountable for the things that they're managing today. And the only way to do that is to actually provide them the information to understand where things are costing, where decisions are being made, and uh, you know the outcome is not the same as what was expected. Um, so that's a budget variance exercise that can happen on a, um, you know, weekly, monthly basis. And then finally, uh, alerting, right? So using systems that show you when spikes come, getting it to the right person so they can make a decision that day and not in a week or in a month when your cloud service provider calls you and 
reminds you that it happened on the on the 12th, you know? So that's really the connective tissue that helps support these conversations where the trust resides within the Cloud Center of Excellence and a lot more accountability sits there to own all of it. And then kind of uh, informing and educating the application owners and DevSecOps teams to kind of get the information to them so that they can manage what they have today. This idea of a chargeback model came up earlier in our conversation. And I want to go down that path maybe a little bit, because I think that's one of the hardest discussions that, that agency CIOs tend to have is mm -hmm. bringing in the mission owners, bringing in the CFO and understanding, okay, what's this really costing each mission owner, each workload or each application? Maybe what are some of the things that you're seeing that works well? What are some of those that we'll, we'll call them best practices, whether Nick or Megan, whoever wants to jump in there? Yeah, I can jump in real quick on this one, Megan, and then you can follow up with uh, any, anything else that you might be missing. But but in reality, that shared service model has a little bit more of a, a, a an understood chargeback model. So if you look at an application portfolio um, where they're a customer of ECMA with Paul Puckett over at Army, right? So you'll see they've got a bill that they get from ECMA, and that's you know kind of the, the budget that they're managing to. There's a baseline associated to that. It's a little bit more um, linear in kind of cost incurred. Now, the place where the challenge resides is if you're working with any of the corporate financial platforms, um, you know, like Workday or any of the ERP systems, you know, there's other costs that come in supporting that application on web front end, on vendors supporting that system, on the innovation within that system. So there's a separation that occurs there that allows the variability to sit more on the business side, customer facing side, which has a little bit more buffer which is why Working Capital Fund is leveraged there. Um, and then for the core services, shared services that are being incurred, you know, those uh, agreements have been made. There's a lot of, um, you know, kind of linearity in that, in that data. And um, you're able to kind of separate those two out. So it's kind of the bill back to shared services and then kind of some of the other stuff that we own is where the separation kind of occurs for chargeback. Yeah, so to follow on what Nick said, uh, what we really see most of, in most effective agencies are the ones that are utilizing technology business management to look at the total cost of ownership for cloud. So it's not just your cloud bill. It's not just what you receive from AWS or Azure. There are a lot of other costs that go behind that. And having a defined chargeback or showback process is instrumental to any agency to be able to recoup the cloud costs without going over or under charging folks. What we see is an automation of this is really essential for cloud financial management. It also honestly leads to a better better defined governance structure. We know that a lot of agencies get a little hesitant around this and saying, I don't wanna automate just yet. My data is not perfect. I'm still working on my cloud tagging governance. But the thing is, is that automation of your tool can honestly help with this. And if you're constantly overspending, you're just never gonna get there because you're never gonna have the funds to actually automate the process. Um, so we find that agencies who deploy a tool uh, to automate this process, they move along a lot faster, even in their cloud tagging process. And you had mentioned earlier about best practices, Jason. So there's a lot of really great materials that are out there that have been put out by the federal government. GSA for existence, you know, released their cloud tagging strategy. And I really wanted to focus on this a little bit because the first process, they have a five-step process. The first one is around establishing your goals. Whenever you're implementing a TBM or a FinOps process, you need to be knowing why you're doing it. You're not just doing it for the sake of doing it. There has to be an end goal in mind. So what we see with a lot of these agencies who have really been able to push this forward is they have use cases identified before they start even going into these processes. So whether it's to save money, find anomalies, whether it's just to do a chargeback to the business units, they really do focus on what are the KPIs so that they can also show their progress along the way. And it also helps the end business unit really understand what they're doing in the cloud. Um, understanding that total cost of ownership will help them realize not only what they can do on that variability of cloud costs, but what else goes into it. I always find that whenever I did the budget process in the federal government, people always skipped over something and tended to be security. Security was just this oversight type thing and nobody knew what to do with it, but it's good to know how much of that money goes towards your specific application. It might be more, it might be less, um, but understanding that what your direct and indirect costs are and getting a monthly bill, or as Nick had mentioned, understanding when a spike happens, when it happens, as opposed to at the end of the month is really essential for a good cloud program. 
Megan, sounds like you had all the fun jobs in government, the budget process that always, uh, I, I know, is an exciting time. Uh, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation. You're listening to the special bulletin review, Managing Cloud Services, Measuring Their Value, sponsored by Aptio on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller.